What if I tell you you can change your macrame wall hanging slightly by turning it into a shelf so that it becomes a functional home decor item that you can use? Stay tuned to find out how. Nicole here and welcome to Bochi Not Macrame. I'm going to be showing you how to make a macrame wall hanging shelf in this tutorial. Macrame wall hangings are beautiful boho decor items but what if I told you you can turn it into a macrame shelf so that it becomes a functional item. This way if you have little trinkets or candles or other items that you want to display on your wall you can then display them on this macrame shelf. While this project is a little smaller, it's about 12 inches in width, there are still several intricate knot patterns incorporated into this pattern. However, I do walk you through step by step on how to make each of the knot patterns. So even if you are newer to macrame, you should still be able to follow along. But I would definitely recommend practicing some of the basic knots first, like the double half inch knot before attempting this one. I do have a comprehensive knot guide on 50 knots and sentence available for download for free over on bochinot.com if you're interested in having a printable knot guide with you as you make your projects, then this may be of interest to you. And with that said, let's jump right in. Before we jump right into the pattern, I just want to go over some materials that I will be using for this design. I'm using 3mm cotton cord, a 12 inch wooden dowel along with a 12 inch wooden plank. And with that, I think we're ready to get started with the pattern. So we're going to take our 12 inch wooden dowel and attach two strands of 200 centimeter long cords in the center with a lark's head knot. And we are now ready to make our first daisy pattern. With the four cords here, we're going to take the middle two cords for a diagonal double half inch knot to the left, and then make one more to the left after that. Then with the middle right cord as an anchor cord, make one double half inch knot to the right. Make a double half inch knot on both sides in the opposite direction so that it curves towards the center and then finish off with one more double half inch knot to the left after that. For this next part, we're going to add a strand of cord on both sides on the top cord so that we can continue with the daisy patterns going to the left and going to the right. So on the top right cord, we're going to attach another 200 centimeter long cord with a reverse lark's head knot plus half hitch. So you've seen I've made the reverse lark's head knot and now take the left cord and make a half inch knot onto the left side and the right cord with a half inch knot onto the right side. Then slide this knot up to the top. To finish off this daisy pattern, we've already had what looks like two diagonal double half inch knots to the right. So take that middle left cord as an anchor cord and the left cord beside it as a working cord for a diagonal double half inch knot to the left. 
then on both sides we're going to make a double half inch knot facing the center and then close off with one double half inch knot to the right with the middle two cords. Now we're going to do the same thing on the left side, mirroring what we just did on the right. So taking another strand of 200 centimeter long cord, make another reverse arc head plus half hitch onto that top left cord. Now finish off this daisy pattern with the middle right cord as an anchor cord for a double half hitch knot to the right. Then make a double half inch knot on both sides towards the center and then close off with one more double half inch knot to the left. Once this is complete, we're just going to add one more full daisy underneath the pattern here on both sides. Now on the left side of the dowel, attach two more 200 centimeter long cords with a lark's head knot. Now make a full daisy pattern similar to how we had started the pattern in the center. Now split the bottom four cords in half and with the top right cord here, we're going to attach another strand of 200 centimeter long cord onto the top right cord using a reverse lark's head plus half hitch. Then finish off the pattern with two diagonal daisies to the right. Once that is done, we can connect the two patterns together on the left side. So taking the four cords in between, we're going to make one more daisy pattern. Now on the right side of the pattern, we're going to mimic the exact same design with two 200 centimeter long cords attached with Lark's head knots. Now start off with a daisy pattern with the four cords, then attach a reverse Lark's head knot plus half inch knot onto that top left cord and finish off with two daisies. Now to connect the middle and the right sections together, take the four cords in between and finish off with one more daisy pattern. For this next part, we're going to attach some cords into the middle section of the pattern. We're going to take a strand of cord at 190 centimeters long, and we're going to take a crochet hook and then weave it through bottom up with the loop end in the middle right loop in between the middle daisy and the next daisy to the right and make a reverse Lars head knot with the strand of cord. Then on the left side, mirroring the section on the right, we're going to do the same thing. A crochet hook is super helpful for this part since the little loops beneath the daisy patterns are quite small here and quite tight 
And so it is helpful to have a crochet hook to bring the cord ends through. Then with the next loop down on the right and on the left, thread another strand of cord through. This time we're going to thread through a strand of cord at 180 centimeters long, folded in half on both sides. Now that the cords have been attached, we can work on the diamond section in the center. Starting with the middle two cords, we're going to make a diagonal double half inch knot to the left. Then using the same anchor cord, we're going to take the next set of vertical cords to the left and make five more diagonal double half inch knots onto the same anchor cord. Then using the middle right cord as the anchor cord, we're going to make five diagonal double half inch knots to the right. We're now going to make a row of reverse double half hitch knots. This is a trickier knot to make. We are going to use the middle right cord as anchor cord, middle left cord as the vertical working cord, and we're going to make a reverse slash head knot by making a loop over and to the right, and then under and through the right. If this is too difficult, you can turn the pattern upside down and make a normal row of double half inch knots at the back, and then once you turn it back to the front, you'll see that it will become a row of reverse double half inch knots. Then continue with five more double half inch knots to the left. Then taking the middle right cord as the anchor cord, we're going to take the next cord to the right as a working cord for a reverse double half inch knot. Then continue with four more to the right. Now in the middle section, add one more row of double half inch knots on both sides. Starting with the middle two cords, make four double half inch knots to the left, and then three to the right. Now, taking the middle four cords, we're going to make a square knot. And now we can begin closing off this diamond pattern, starting with the nearest anchor cords on both sides. So on the left anchor cord, we're going to make a diagonal double half inch knot row to the right. So we're going to make three double half inch knots here. And then on the right side, we're going to take that anchor cord and make four double half inch knots to the left.
To close off the reverse double half hitch knot row, we're going to take that anchor cord on the left side and point it towards the right and then take that next cord down and make a reverse double half hitch knot. Then continue three more times to the right. Now taking that right anchor cord, we're going to point it over to the left and make five diagonal reverse double half inch knots. Now to close off this next row, we're going to take a strand of cord at 130 centimeters long first and attach to the right anchor cord using a reverse Lars head knot. Because there is a little bit of a gap there, we're going to attach a strand of cord there first. Then once that cord is attached, we're going to finish off the row of diagonal double half inch knots to the left. Repeat the same thing on the left side by attaching a strand of cord at 130 centimeters long there first, and then finish off the row of diagonal double half inch knots to the right after that. Then at the very end, we're going to close off with one more double half inch knot to the left. Now that the diamond pattern is complete, we can finish off with another V-shaped daisy pattern underneath. Starting on the left side, we're going to take that upper right cord as an anchor cord, and then the next cord to the right on that middle diamond 
as a working cord for a double half hitch knot. Then take the next cord down and make one more double half hitch knot to the right. Then taking that first working cord, we're going to use that as an anchor cord now and take that left cord as a working cord for a double half hitch knot to the left. Then we're going to close off this daisy pattern just like how we did the other ones. With the same four cords here, we're going to add two more daisy patterns underneath. Now on the right side, we're going to repeat the same pattern. Take that left cord on the right section as an anchor cord and then the next cord down as a working cord for two double half inch knots diagonally to the left. And then use that first working cord now as an anchor cord for a diagonal double half inch knot to the right and then finish off the daisy pattern just like the other ones. Now underneath, make two more daisy patterns using the same four cords. Now bring the two sides together in the middle for one last daisy pattern. We're now going to attach some 70 centimeter long cords onto the bottom loops in between the daisy patterns here. Using your crochet hook again to pull up a strand of cord folded in half in between the loops on the right side for two at the top section on the right. Then repeat the same thing on the left side. Now in the middle section, we're going to weave in between the daisy patterns three times here.
Now repeat the same on the right side. Once the cords have all been attached, there should be a lot of fringe in the center of the pattern now. Next, we're going to take a strand of cord at 220 centimeters long and attach it to the left side of the dowel using a lark's head knot. With these two cords, make a diagonal double half inch knot to the left. This is the start of a diamond pattern. Because we've only attached one strand of cord here onto the dowel, what we're going to do after this diagonal double half inch knot is we're going to attach the cords onto these two cords here. So taking another strand of 220 centimeter long cord, make a reverse Lars head plus half hitch onto the left cord and then do the same thing onto the right cord. Now we're going to close off this diamond pattern similar to how we had closed off the daisy patterns. We're going to take that left anchor cord and make two diagonal double half inch knots to the right and then with the right anchor cord we're going to make three diagonal double half inch knots to the left. Then using these same six cords, we're going to repeat for a full diamond underneath. So taking that anchor cord, we're going to make two diagonal double half inch knots to the left. Then taking that middle right cord, make two diagonal double half inch knots to the right. Then close it off just like how we did it above. Make one more full diamond underneath. After the third diamond is made, we're going to take that right cord 
as an anchor cord and then taking the cord next to it on the daisy pattern, we're going to use that as a working cord for a double half inch knot. Then take that working cord that we just used and tuck it at the back and using the same six cords that we had used above for the diamond patterns and we're going to make three more diamonds underneath. Then similar to what we did above, we're going to take the right cord as the anchor cord here from that diamond pattern on the left and then take a cord from the daisy pattern underneath and we're going to make a double half inch knot onto this anchor cord. Then after that, using the same six cords, make one more diamond pattern underneath. I've already attached a strand of cord on the right side and we're going to repeat the exact same pattern here, mirroring what we did on the left side.
Once the right side is complete, take the two sides together in the middle and take three chords from both sides in the middle, so the middle six chords, and we're going to finish off with one diamond pattern. Now at the bottom of the pattern, we're going to make two V-shaped double half inch knot rows. So starting on the left side, we're going to take the left cord as an anchor cord and we're going to make a row of diagonal double half inch knots to the right, stopping after the middle left cord. Then repeat the same thing on the right side over to the left. And then finish off with one more double half inch knot in the center. Add one more V-shaped row underneath. Once the middle pattern is complete, we're going to attach two more cords onto the left side of the dowel using Lark's head knots. Attach two 250 centimeter long cords onto the left side. Here we're going to make a series of small daisy patterns. So just like how we had done it before, make one daisy pattern with the four chords. Add nine more daisy patterns underneath for a total of 10 daisy patterns. Attach two more cords onto the right side and then repeat the same pattern for 10 daisy patterns. Depending on the length of fringe that you want will determine how much fringe to cut off. I do recommend leaving as much fringe as possible at the bottom.
Now save your scrap cords from the bottom of the fringe and we're going to add some tassels onto the middle section. We're going to take four strands of cord at approximately 18 centimeters long each. We're going to comb through them Now we're going to take one end and weave it through a diamond pattern. We're going to skip every second diamond pattern from the center and then attach the tassels onto every second diamond pattern. So weaving one end through the right side of the inner loop in between the diamond, we're going to take the other end and weave it through the left loop. This part can get rather tricky since the loops are quite small. And then we're going to take both ends at the back and pull it through the middle from underneath. Comb through the tassel and we're going to repeat it two more times on the left side for every second diamond. Repeat the same on the right side and then once more in the center. Now all you have to do is trim the tassels. All that is left to do now is attach the ends of the cords of the daisy patterns on both sides through the holes on the plank. Before we do this, we're going to add a series of alternating half hitch knots first. We're going to separate the daisy pattern cords into two groups of two cords. And then we're going to take the left two cords and make seven alternating half hitch knots. Then repeat the same thing with the right two cords. Repeat the same on the right side. Now bringing our plank up again, we're going to thread the cord sections through each of the holes. So with the left side, we're just going to tape both ends together since one end is longer than the other so that it is easier to thread through both ends through the hole. We're going to take the right two cords and we're going to thread it through the back left hole.
Then underneath, we're going to make an overhand knot. Repeat the same thing with the left two cords onto the front left hole. Now repeat the same pattern on the right side mirroring the left. Last but not least, trim off the excess cords at the bottom of these overhand knots. Lastly, take a scrap cord from your scrap pile at about 14 inches long and we're going to tie two double overhand knots at the top to form the handle. And that's a wrap with our macrame shelf pattern. I really hope you guys love this design and enjoyed making this one. I really do like the design of this with the little tassels and the daisy knot patterns. I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this pattern. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you do enjoy projects like this, we are going over a hanging project theme over on the Boshi Knot Macrame community on Patreon. Whether it's a cat bed hanger, hanging shelves, plant hangers, or chandeliers, we have got you covered with this theme this month. And one special thing to note is that once you get access, you get access to all of our previously released content. So that means over 200 tutorials and patterns to choose from. If you're interested in finding out more, head on over to patreon.com slash for more details. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.